the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke. We're going to read from chapter 8. Well-known parable. We're going to look at chapter 8. We're going to read from 1, verse 1 to verse 15. I'll read so you can follow your Bibles. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. So about it? I'll turn it over there. Chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and showing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And a certain woman which has have been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Susa, the hero steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him for the substance. And when much people were gathered together, and were come to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. A sow went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the hair devoted. And some fell upon a rock, and soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on the good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and underfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he said, He that has ear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, those by the wayside are they that hear, then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which they had, when they heard, received the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believed, and a time of temptation, fall away. And that which fell upon among the thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to, fruit, uh, to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having the ear the word of God, kept it and bring forth fruit with repentance. And we'll stop there. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word this morning, Father. Lord, you know each one by name this morning. Father, we pray even for the one who's going to watch through the net, Lord. Father, we pray. You know them, Father. Lord, we pray that you speak to us this morning. Give us concentration. Let your Holy Spirit as great teacher and comforter and corrector speak to us this morning, Lord. Lord, speak to our spirits. Deliver us from your word. Let your, let your word deliver us from all other things. Heal as your word comes true, Father. We thank you, Father, this morning. Feed us with your word. We ask this in Jesus. Amen. Friends, I'm going to caption this word this morning as the soil that reflects the seed. You got that? The soil that reflects the seed. It's amazing when you see this, this chapter, 
in Luke 8. It tells us the very first verse, isn't it? Jesus went preaching throughout every city and showing the good news. Oh, he did that. And showing the good news of the kingdom of God. How did he show it? And it says the 12 was with him. Showing is more a demonstration, isn't it? I would have been happy if I had to, would have been all to understand that he preached the good news or preached the good news of the kingdom of God, but it says that he showed them the good news of the kingdom of God. There's a group of people who are with him, isn't it? Verse 2 tells us there was a woman healed personally by Jesus. We, we, we hear a testament this morning. And of evil spirits. Her name was Mary from Magdala, a place called Magdala, which we, which we call Mary Magdalene. She was one of the, I would say, a first disciple of Jesus, apart from the twelve. And there were other women as well, isn't it? It says there were a few women mentioned there. And it also said they ministered unto him of their substance, meaning whatever they could. It could have been material things, food, that when Christ just went wherever the Lord led him, could be financial aid. Many people say that they were the financial supporters to Jesus' ministry. Prayer support, they were holding him in prayer wherever he went. It's amazing, isn't it? Women play an important role in God's kingdom. Always did. They've been with Jesus. They gave themselves totally and completely to him. In other words, sold out. In fact, if you look at Luke 24, end of the Gospel of Luke, verse 9 and 10, is the exact same woman who was the first people to see the resurrected Jesus. I was shocked. The same women, Susanna, Mary, Joanna, and a couple more. Christ chose to reveal himself after the resurrected body, even the disciples were not there. It was them that, that he chose to reveal himself. Is that tells us something this morning? So they were with him, in verse 2 tells you. And then you find Christ, many much people gathered, verse 4 tells us. And then he gives them a parable. What is a parable? Just interact with me this morning. What is a parable? What do you understand by a parable? A story. Story? Yeah? What's different between a parable and a proverb? You got a proverb, right? Yes. Yes, you're close. Very close. And guessing, yes, it's a story in both. A close. The word parable is not an English word, but it's derived from a Greek word. P A R A B O L E. A parable literally means putting things side by side. Literal meaning of that word parable. Meaning to be a starter or a trigger to provoke the hearer to think, interact, and reflect. Whenever Christ said a parable, it, the purpose was to get people thinking, get people interact, get people to reflect. So the ones who desire and choose to think and understand becomes, because he says here, the disciples, it was, remember this battle was said on public, everyone who came there, but it was disciples in verse 9 wanted to know what was this parable about, isn't it? What might this parable be? They came and asked him. Verse 10 tells us, he returned and says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. <laughs> For others, it's just a parable. Good story, good moral. Let's go. But he says, to you, to you, is not just a parable, but it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. The sin, 
For others it's a parable because they see, I love the word he says so beautifully, see, they might not see, really. Hearing, they might not understand. Meaning that they hear the parable, but do not get the hidden meaning, as he said, the deeper meaning of what a parable meant to be. It's a parable. But you see how beautiful, and every time Jesus spoke deeper truths, he always spoke in, parable, uh, spoke in parables. People came to him to understand. They are ones who came who wanted to know what that means, because it had some impact on them. Others said, beautiful story, good master rabbi, see you next time, see you next week. But here you find, it says the mysteries, the kingdom of God. I don't know if you'll know the kingdom of God started at the time Jesus came. He said, kingdom has come now. Yes, the period we are in grace period, but we are in the kingdom of God period. The Old Testament didn't have the kingdom of God picture. He says that he went on preaching and showing the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ was telling them, Christ was telling them in this parable, in the context of explaining the kingdom of God. He came to the world, hear me, to take our sins and reconcile to us and to show us the kingdom of God. I believe the kingdom of God is not just now. It was there when Christ appeared. It started from that moment. And all Christ taught more about the kingdom of God than anything else. I mean, you'll we'll see that in the Bible. He spoke more of the kingdom of God than anything else. It was all him reflecting the kingdom of God, showing the kingdom of God. He wants to the kingdom of God. His miracles and signs and wonders was to portray the kingdom of God. Why is it so important that we should know the kingdom of God? Because the fall of mankind, we all, we all know, that every man born in, in the world, into this world, yummy, is born into the kingdom of darkness. That's a fact. We are born in the kingdom of darkness. You don't have to teach a child to be selfish. What you've got to teach a child is to be selfless. Mine. I got two daughters. The first one they say is mine. Mine, mine. No. We are born in that. We are all of us born in the kingdom of darkness. And there's no way out except through death. Same way, there's no way out of the kingdom of God except through birth. Is that clear? There's no way out of the kingdom of darkness through death. Same way, there's no way into the kingdom of God except through birth. That's why he told Nicodemus, a great teacher, man of the law, he said, unless you're born again, we all are born once, but we have to be born again in the kingdom of God. He says, you're the teacher and you don't know this basic foundation thing, you know. And young was, so the kingdom of God was, was Christ's motive, was Christ's old purpose to come, to show the kingdom of God. And then he starts to give this parable to the ones who came after him. And the disciple says, can you explain this parable? To us, I love he says, he says, for, for y'all are given to know the mysteries of God. Mysteries of the kingdom. See, there are difference between mysteries of the kingdom of God that God will show us clearly, and there are mysteries of the Bible, which is interpreted by the Holy Spirit. You get confused with that. You understand that? The mysteries that God will, there are mysteries in the Bible. Because it's written by the Holy Spirit. There are clear truths, doctrines, and there are mysteries. Some are very mysteries. What do we do normally? We try to confuse. We take the mystery and make it, make it a dogma, make it a doctrine, and there we come into error. For example, a doctrine will be unless you're born again, clearly mentioned everywhere. Unless you repent, unless you, unless you believe and repent. 
the kingdom of God is there with you. And so many things, but there are mysteries in the Holy Word that the Holy Spirit has kept locked. And some mysteries we know and know. Do we know the mystery of the Trinity? Or we know, we know partially. Christ in the church. Christ in the church. Mystery of the communion. Do we not understand it fully? Yeah. Christ is coming. It's a right, clear doctrine. But how he is coming? We can interpret it in many ways. That's the mystery. God allows that mystery to be there so that we walk by faith, knowing the truth of the scripture. Amen. The problem we do is we try to put our hands in the mysteries and really get and dabble ourselves and come up to our own conclusions. And God wants mysteries, says, I will have eternity to explain to you all that. But all I want to do is clear truths and this is, this is what I wanted to do. Are you going to walk in the spirit? Are you going to be born again? Yes, it's clear. You don't need, you don't need to dig that up. It's all clear in the written word of God. We don't have to understand. Do you want to? Yes, it's there. Do you need to come to Christ? Of course. Are you a sinner? Yes, the scripture tells you clearly. Do you know, do you know walk, walk in the spirit? Yes. Do you need to get baptized? Yes. But there are mysteries also in the, in the holy word that God has kept it for a reason. We can come up with all, we try to unravel the mysteries and try to make it a, a doctrine. And that's when we get our hands dirty and we get everything muddled up. Are you, are you, are you with me this morning? Yeah. For example, Christ is coming. Is it a mystery or a doctrine? It's a clear doctrine. He's coming. Second coming is true. How is coming? When is coming? That's a mystery. But do we know that? Do we, want, do we have to know that? We have to know that he's coming. What we need to know is, we need to be ready. That's clear. Is that mystery? No, it's clear. We have to be ready. Doesn't matter pre-trip, post-trip, mid-trip. I don't really worry because any trip let it be. I'm sorry, I'm using words. Pre-tribulation, middle tribulation, post-tribulation. It really worries me, it doesn't worry me. All I know is, do I'm ready or not? Yeah. Amen. Do I'm fighting my flesh every day or not? Do I'm walking with the Spirit every day or not? That's my concern and that's my walk. Do I'm reflecting Christ in my life, to my family, to my wife, to my friends close to me? Doesn't matter what ship going to come, I can be sure He knows me and I know Him when it comes. So there are mysteries in the Word of God. There's a truth, plain truths. You gotta really understand this too. And I said even yesterday, the, the doctrines of atonement and the doctrines of uh, the doctrine of atonement. It's one doctrine of atonement. What Christ has done, the doctrine of substitution, such major pillars. It's like two pillars that Christianity stands on. If you really haven't done that, study it. Go study what is the doctrine of atonement. What is the doctrine of uh, substitution? The more you dig deep, uh, deep on it, you'll, you'll understand how much the cross means, how much Christ does. What does Christ mean to you? And then you look for His coming, and you prepare yourself every day. So that's important. When we get off, when we don't know much of these two cardinal, where Christianity stands, Christianity stands in its two pillars. What's the atonement? What makes atonement? What's the substitution? How did Christ replaced, took ourselves, took our sinful nature, he substituted. What is atonement? A perfect sacrifice. Everything was in him. So there are mysteries, so there are clear doctrines and there are mysteries. So here he says, it's given unto you, you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And Jesus came to show us that, isn't it? And then he goes on to give this parable and they ask him this parable. And he gives a beautiful, he gives us four different kinds of environment, isn't it? What one of the three things is we see here in this parable that Christ explains? Anyone any guesses? Three things you see, isn't it? Mainly here. You see a sower. Is that that? A sower? You see a seed and you see a soil, isn't it? Three things. 
Christ talks about, he talks in uh, agriculture terms, he talks in, a, in terms that they can understand. As I said, it's parable, that's what parable is, but there's a deeper meaning. He talks about a sow. He said the sow goes to sow. Sow the seed, he talks about the seed. And he talks about a soil, isn't it? I mean, you look at this full, you look at this full parable, you see the soil is nothing but the hearts of people, isn't it? Maisie yeah. explains four kinds of soil, I'm going to go a little deep on that. Four kinds of soil. Mm -hmm. Interesting how how he actually he re unravels that. Four kinds of environment that the soul is. First, the soil is the first one. What he says, the wayside or the pathway. It's very interesting, isn't it? He said the wayside, the seed, the seed falls. But then he says, the birds in, in the parable, but when the disciples came to ask him, he says, devil comes and snatches away, takes the word, hold from the hearts. It's powerful, isn't it? When you look at the four, this four, four soils, one is the wayside soil, second is a rocky, rocky soil where the seed falls on the, on the surroundings. Third one is a thorny environment, and the fourth one's good. But I mean realize all, all the four kinds, the soil is good. The soil is actually suitable. All these four cases, the soil was suitable for the seed to grow. Yeah. Like, look, at prop look again properly. It really blew my mind. All the four cases, the soil was suitable for the seed to grow. The soil was not, the yeah, it was not deficient. It was not the problem. It was suitable for the seed to grow and to be fruitful. And what is the soil? Let me explain what is the soil in, in normal terms, in, in a, a secular, what exactly, what is the meaning of a soil when you say a soil in, in agricultural terms? It means a material in the surface of the ground which plants are suitable to grow. It means a mixture of organic material, minerals, gases, liquids, which is the soil that is suitable for life, for plants to grow. And look at the, I said the four cases, soil was suitable for the seed to grow, to be fruitful. But then what was the problem here? Why is it there's, why is it Christ gives you the results of each one and they all are different? What was the first one? Let's go each one. First one is the wayside. It says, the sow went to sow and it sow, some fell on the wayside and was trodden down and the fowls of the hair devoted. And then he explains to the disciples, the fowl says the devil that takes away the word. Look at the helpless condition. Word are from the hearts. Soil was good. But the problem was in that art of a person, which is a wayside soil, is where, where the art was allowed to be on the wayside, where the devil can come and snatch the ways, snatch out the seed, snatch out the word. Remember, we're talking about the word of God. How true is that? And Luke tells you, least they should believe and be saved. The soil, the, soil, the seed falls in the right, in right soil, and all the soils are right here. The problem is, this soil was in the wayside, the pathway. The pathway where, where nothing grows, if you, know, if you know what that means. Nothing grows, it's trampled. The seed was trampled, the seed was trampled, and then after all it became vulnerable for the enemy to take it out. It's a sad case, isn't it? It was a helpless condition. The seed was drawn away. The soil had all capacity, it had minerals, it had everything to grow. But just because it was in an environment of a, of, of a pathway, it was open, vulnerable to the enemy to take it off. How many of us relate to that sometimes in our lives? And here he talks about believe. The word believe actually means, the Greek is to cleave. It's like leaving and cleaving, it's cleave, it's to adore, it's to hold on. Believe is not just an intellectual, intellectual decision, it's a heart decision. Amen. 
Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ means do you really cleave to him? Do you really hold on to him as if, as if it depends your life? That's the belief that Greek speaks about. Believe with your heart and you shall be saved. Not an intellectual, not something that you, okay, just say a few words and, you know, it means that you cleave on. You lead to something else and you cleave on. And that's why when I tell people that you come to Christ, you need to be ready to reject everything else. The people don't like me for that. Because you can't put on something with, with the word of God. If you put on Christ, you need to be ready to reject everything else. Because you'll have trouble. Because you will be in a situation where you say, are you, again, I'm not talking about your strength. It's your willingness to do that. God will give you strength. He'll give you the grace. And we all of us can say that. We could not do certain things. We could not, we could not come out from traditions. We could not come out of denominations. But what did Christ did? Today we can testify. I don't know how, but he's done it. We were willing to put away everything so that we can have Christ. That's believing in the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. That's confessing after you believe. So you're this one. You find, they, it was, uh, Christ says at least you should be believed and saved. So sad. He had the soil, it had the seed, but it could not. <laughs> it could not produce what it's supposed to produce. Having the seed and the soil. And what happens, the devil just came and snatched away. A helpless condition, a drawn away condition. Look at the next one. The next, the next soil. Next verse, a, the seed fell on another soil, sprung up, but withered away. Why? It says that it was on the rocks. It lacked moisture. And, how, and listen to what Jesus explains that. Verse 14, thank God Jesus gives a parable and explains it. Verse 14 tells you, uh, 13 tells you, they on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believed, well, and the time of temptation fall away. Now this, this soil again was suitable and capable for, for producing what it meant to be, but this soil was not like the first soil, then I have the wayside. But this soil had the capacity to believe with joy. As I say there, with joy. But it simply says also, while a, for a while it believed, in a time of temptation it fall away. It's amazing, isn't it? It had no root. It had no moisture. In the, in the other Gospels, if you look at Matthew and uh, Mark, tells you the same, same parable story that Christ mentions. It tells you that they didn't have, they, they just fell away because of, of the persecution, tribulation, temptation. How many felt related to that? They believed. No problem with the soil. It believed. It, it, it was with joy. But it never grounded itself. There were rocks around it. It could not really produce. And because it was rock around it, it could not go deeper. And because it couldn't go deeper, it couldn't produce the fruits that it was meant to produce. Here you find a rocky environment, a rootless condition. Didn't have a root. I'm here for our temptations this morning, even when you came to Christ till now. Temptations. To not to go deep on the word, but just to keep, believe me friends, Christ never promised you just to hold the word. He wants you to go deeper and become the word. He wants you to become one with him. And that's why I said, Jesus wants us to be disciples. We are believers everywhere around the world. Every second person is a believer. Everyone knows the name of Jesus. Through your technology, everyone knows. But I'm your former disciple, Jesus Christ. 
How many of us can take the word, believe, and allow the temptation, allow the tribulation? You know what? That, that actually requires you to be surrendered. That requires you to, to not to try to work out your salvation, but leave it to Him. And Lord, whatever taking from Him, let the Lord lead, because He will start producing roots in you. Unless you have a root, you can face a storm. This soil was so good, again, but it didn't have root. It believed, it's not like the first soil, it believed. It was joy, in fact it says with joy it believed. But in the times of temptation, Matthew tells you in times of tribulation and persecution. How many times, how many of you relate in your life, in my life, there are dryness, there are times of something's dry. God wants you to just hold on to the word of God. How many times you can see that you go to a, a, a point where there's nothing else out there, a wilderness-like experience, and all you have is what he said. All you have is his word in you. All you have is word. God is allowing to see that word goes into deep, rooted, starts producing. How many of you can see a seed and tell me what seed is it? How many of you some seeds can do it? Some seeds you never do it until you see the fruits coming up. God wants that, friends. And here you find it very sad. Christ just says that. They are on the rock. Are they which when, when they hear it, receive the word, have no root, which for a while believed, and a time of temptation fell or fall away. And then he goes on to the third one. What's the third one? Some fell among the thorns. Again, even that soil was good, suitable, but only thing it has thorns around it. Thorns sprang up and choked it. I says, choked it, and what is the what is the thorns? Yummy. It's trust, isn't it? Cares, riches, and pleasures of this life. Really? They are the thorns that choke the seed in the soil. I may fall, I feel sometimes the cares are so much in me and I don't see the answers. Careful of the thorns. Because thorns only do one good thing. It chokes the seed. It chokes the word of God. You can be, no, I'm not classifying good cares, bad cares. I'm talking about cares. You can have the genuine cares. Genuine cares for your church. Genuine cares for your family. Genuine cares for your husband, your wife. Let's watch out for the thorns. It chokes you. It chokes you. It makes you think, oh, I don't think I can, I can come out. Christ says that was a thorny environment. It choked them. It choked the seed. Seed was added. It fell on a good soil. It was about, it's about to bring and be perfected. But as it grew, see this one, this soil is different. It was not on the wayside. It was not on the rocky place. Meaning, it believed, it had all strength to believe. It also had roots to grow. Because it's a different, different soil, isn't it? It had a different, it was able to grow, but what stopped it? The cares. I'm never great. I can read that very much. Brother, only if I see this in my family, I will serve him more. I said, no, you're not. No, you're not. Only if this problem goes with my wife. No, you're not. Only if my children can listen to me. I will be preaching. Really? All right. Only if my job can be better. I'll come to church twice a week. Really? Okay. What about coming to church while all the situation? There are thorns. There are cares. So what about the riches? I'm not talking about riches. Do you know you can be poor and still be rich? Yeah. You think only all rich people have all bad ideas? 
o nefe o sin pegas no dia. Riches, what you want to do, what you want to become, you can still be nothing but still are those things troubling you. Pleasures of this life, oh good pleasures pastor, not bad pleasures, I'm talking about the bad ones, the good pleasures. I come home, all I want to do is relax, get my wife to give me a cup of coffee, turn on the TV, just need to unwind, how many of you know the word unwind, very common in Australia, unwind, unwind. Good. Times is good, but watch out. Yeah. Stones. Watch out. Because that will be pricked, that will be stopping the seed in you that God has planted for a better purpose. I'm not doing something wrong, I'm just relaxing. Yes, but watch out. Because that will not that will choke you eventually to one point in your life, and God will be convicting you. Are you supposed to come? Are you supposed to dwell in my word? Are you supposed to be thinking, thinking about my presence? And some people think, I don't know, some people think, even I was growing that I thought that, you know. Uh, uh, I love to worship God, but you know what? It's hard work. But I can sit for, sit on the TV for two hours, no issues. How many of you know that worshiping God is not something that you do as an extra activity? In the presence of God is not extra activity. It should be part of you. And we got this whole tradition saying, I have to have a set of time, sit in my house, keep my Bibles ready, have a cup of coffee. How much trouble be? That will never happen actually. <laughs> Maybe in heaven it might happen. You will never have that. God's looking for your faithfulness. You will be running with your children. You be in someone's place, sometimes the Lord says, I want you to switch off and think of me. I want to give you something. Oh, brother, you're talking uh, I stuff. No. Problem we always say, not everyone's like that. My question is, when are we going to be like that? <laughs> Everyone's different level. Yeah, I understand that. I also was level before. <laughs> And maybe it will be the same thing. But when are we going to say, this is a standard Lord, this is what I want to come, what I want to achieve. I can't do with my strength. But I'm going to look at you and say, Lord, how many of you have a cry that you haven't, that you want to be in the presence of God? How many of you be that's the only cry you have? I hope you see testimonies in coming weeks here. Saying that, I, like I said this morning, that word Jesus just came out. How many of you have that testimonies? I want to see that more and more. Testimonies where your spiritual life has changed. Testimonies that you said, I was doing something but I just felt drawn to pick up the Bible. Not that I have to pick up because I feel guilty if I don't pick up, not for that. But I just felt I had to pick up. And I just said, Lord, I don't know what's, what's happening. But I opened the Bible and boom, something just jumped out. The word of the word just came into my system. It just saturated me. It just filled me. I mean, if I love it, those kind of testimonies. I want to hear this church. I'm dying to hear this testimony. That, that shows God is living. That shows God is in you. And when we come Sunday morning there, we come as temples of God here. Ah. We don't come here, as many said this morning, we don't come here and say, Lord, welcome you. We are bringing him on coming here. And then we say together, Lord, you're welcome. Why? Because we are already holding him and hosting him. The temple of God, Christ said to the, to the, to the Jews, they came and asked him in Luke, when does the kingdom of God come? The kingdom of God, what did he tell them? Anyone knows that? Luke 17. When is it, they, they all are, they were really clever, they, they studied the Torah, that's what they keep doing. And they looked at Jesus and said, you know what, you're talking so much. Tell us when is the kingdom of God coming? Is that there? No, go to the hand. I think it's the 17, chapter 17. I won't read it exactly from there, so that I don't miss anything. 17, 20, and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, chapter 17, Luke, yeah? 20 and 21, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when, should, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, 
the kingdom of God is not with observation. Oh, okay. I'm meeting some nerves here, I think. Not with observation. Neither shall they say here or there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom. And then Paul goes to give you the characteristics of the kingdom. And he says the kingdom of God is, he was talking in the context of people drinking and eating. He says kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, joy, in what? In the Holy Spirit. How is that possible? What is righteousness? Whose righteousness we have? Whose peace we have? We are supposed to have actually. Ought to have. Whose peace is ought to have? Christ's peace. Whose joy is supposed to have? What he's done on the cross. And all of that comes in the Holy Spirit because of Jesus. Paul says, Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Why did, why did, why did he say so, so presently to them? Because knowing that each of them are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why in that context he says you have to walk in the Spirit. What he means is not that you are becoming whole, you know, theologically and, you know, forget that you are human. No, he's asking to walk in the Spirit is when you really understand that you are a spiritual being. You are put in a body and you have a soul. You are first a spiritual being. And then you are put in this body. And to aware, and to bring your mind, bring your emotion, bring your will into that. Aligning with, God, with the Spirit of God. And that's why born again, coming to Christ is a first step. But living in Christ is all a little, all a complete different game. And here you find... <coughs> This one, the third one. Thorns, the cares, the cares, the riches, and the pleasures. Friends, don't let the cares of this world choke you. Choke the world in you. You can come to church, listen to the word, and go back and allow the thorns to poke you. Allow the thorns to choke you. On your felt, be honest and say this, this morning that when I, once I step home after coming to church, I feel the pressures and the cares. What do we do? We hold on to what Christ has spoken to us. We, we not allow the thorns to choke us. And it's funny what happens here. When the, when the thorns choke the seed, which is in the soil, what happened? It could not, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It could not bring fruit to perfection. Luke tells us that. It cannot bring food per uh, perfection. No. <clears throat> it, it, it believed, it was not on the wayside. The devil now took the word out, yeah? The devil now took the word out, which is the first one. Second one, it had root after believing and after understanding. But what stopped it? The third one. It's funny, isn't it? Sometimes you blame the devil for everything. <clears throat> But what happened here? The devil took the word. They have root. They have been hearing the word for a couple of years and root was setting and setting. They didn't have, look, they, they were at temptation, tribulation, but they were, were walked through that. They were came, overcome that, and the root was become strong. But what happened here? The cares got them. The thorns choked them. Choke, you know what is choking? It's taking every, every life out of you. Just squeezing you till the seed completely becomes unfruitful. Do you realize that seed was, seed was there still? What a seed is that? Seed has been there, but could not do what it's supposed to do. It's a very sad state for us. Sad, sad, sad situation. You can have the seed with you for 20 years, 15 years, but it's been choked and choked. Seed has not been taken by the, by the devil. Seed has been got the roots, got the word, God has been grown, but it's not bringing the fruit 
Not bringing the purpose is meant to be because of the cares. Yes. Yes, Sudhi. That's right. <laughs> so important, friends. And he said, and take the fourth one. But the good ground, there which in an honest and good heart, having the word of having the word, kept it and bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. The forbearance. What is the what does the soil had? The soil had everything that allowed. Now the soil is not perfect, it had weaknesses, but it made sure it was not in the other three situations. It didn't allow it to be the wayside, it was not on the on the rocky side, it never allowed the thorns to get into it, but it just allowed it. And what happened it says here, it forbear, it produced. And I'm going to share something more deeper here before I finish. You see a sower, which is God, you see the seed. Jesus tells us the word of God. You see the soil and the substance. Now Christ is talking about the kingdom of God here, right? He's talking to the kingdom of God in a parable. Verse 5, he mentions the sower, which is God. Verse 11, he mentions the seed, which is the word of God. In fact, Matthew tells you the word of the kingdom. Now when you go back to John, 1 John, and you see who is the word, who is the word of God? You look at John 1.1 1, 1, and you look at 1 John 1.1.2, 1, 1, 1, you see the word of God and it says that the word of God was manifested unto us. Now this is going to expand your thinking a little bit here. If, if the word of God was Jesus and Jesus is talking to them, the seed is actually Jesus. Are you good? John 1 and 14 says, The begotten of the Father. The Son, begotten of the Father. The seed, Christ has revealed himself to them, Yomi, a parable in a parable. Are you getting this one? He's talking about himself as the seed. He's talking about himself as the seed. Now put Jesus in all the four settings. You'll see something different. Amen. So Christ so Jesus was in the hearts. But there on the wayside, the devil took out Jesus. Second, the, some hearts, Jesus was put. They believed. They were so happy, believed in Jesus Christ. But in times of persecution and temptation, rather than allowing God to say, Lord, what are temptation? That's why I always tell you, when you have a symptom of guilt and you feel very, guilt is just a symptom. But there are two things can happen in guilt. Hey, now take common cold. You have sneezing, you have cough. It can be a flu or it could be a common cold, right? Guilt can be caused by the devil to make you far away from God or can, call, or can be caused by the Holy Spirit to convict you. Now how do you know, brother, you might ask me, how do I know which one is which? I feel so terrible, I feel so guilty of myself. How do I know is God convicting me so I can draw closer to him? Or how do I know the devil is trying to, you'll know is what you do after the guilt. Whether you're drawing close to God, come back and say, yes, Lord, I am what I am, but you the one, you the one who saved me. So what I am, I'm nothing what you have done. I'm going to come back to you and say, Lord, you are everything. Or you're going to say, no, Lord, I can't come back to you because you look what, I can't be good before you. So therefore, I'm going far away from you. <coughs> what happens after the guilt will reveal if it was guilt of, the, of conviction of the Holy Spirit, you will say, yes, I fell, I fall, but I know what? My righteousness is nothing. I'm going to come before you and say, Lord, it's all about you. Yes, I messed up again. I messed up a thousand times. Maybe another million times before I die, I'll mess up. But you know what? I know my Creator. I know my Savior. He's true. I'm going to come back to Him. All the saints, the Word of God in the Bible tells you they were not perfect people. 
But know what made them perfect? Getting up, getting up, getting up, and having a conviction of sin, and hating the sin, and hating the sin, hating the sin, even falling again, hating it, and walking, and walking. Saints are sinners who are saved by grace. Mm. <clears throat> sinners are sinners are lost without God. Saints doesn't make you perfect. We got this traditional opinion. I come to church, I have to be use some more amens, more hallelujahs. Use all that. It should come from your heart. We don't come to church to be something. We bring the church with us. And here you find the word of God, Jesus, talking a parable in a parable. He's telling them. You see the fourth one. They had, they had Jesus. But they allow the cares, they allow the, the riches, the pleasures to choke Jesus in them. And what the fourth one did? They just they're free from all of the three. They just had a good heart, what it says, hear the word, kept it, regardless of how good they are, how bad they are, but kept it and bring forth with patience. I love the word patience. You don't get patience by praying, are you? I wish I could get that back. We don't get patience by praying. We don't get patience by any other way, but by waiting and keeping the word till it brings forth fruits. All the time God is doing in you something that you can't see. But I'd rather leave it, I'd rather give it to him to do that. Don't look at me, I'm getting, I'm, going, I'm, I'm changing my appearance every two years. And it's falling off, getting bald, don't look the same. But God is doing something in me. How do I know it? I trust him. How do I know it? I walk and say, Lord, I'm not perfect. And I look at myself every time and thinking, Lord, I'm not even half that you want me to be. Say, yes, thank you. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. I'm not perfect, yes. The long as you have the thought, I can work with you. The long as you think you're not perfect, thank you, son. Thank you, daughter. Come in. But the time you think, I, I got all this figured out. I know how to please you. I know how to please you. He says, you have no idea. In fact, it smells. In fact, I, I get the stink when you say those things. You know why I said that? Filthy rags. All righteousness. <laughs> filthy rags. Filthy rags before God. And you say, Lord, depart from me. I can't even please you in this thing. Says, well, I think I can use you more now. That's an ongoing thing, friends. And your, this, this good soil, it reflected the seed how? by just keeping it and bringing forth in patience. That's what he did. He didn't do anything big. And Jesus was that seed. He was saying a parable in a parable. It's funny, isn't it, how they couldn't see what is it. And the disciples, John, Gospel of John says that word, the word was with God and the word was God and manifest unto us if we know him. I wonder when, when did John get that revelation? At this time of the parable or after that? He was revealing a parable in a parable. Friends, what soil are we made up? Remember, soil is always what God has made. We can't do anything but the soil. He knows you and me. But are we allowing the situation, the environment to take, take control of us? Are we allowing the wayside to trample the word? Are we allowing the, the rocky ground to, to stop us? The, the sun comes up, what happens? There's no root, it dries up. Are you allowing the thorns to have the best in you? Or are you just saying, I'm going to keep the seed. I don't have capacity because he waters it and he'll grow it. All I'm going to do is, I'm just going to keep the soil away from the wayside, away from the rocky stone, away from the thorns. 
That's all I can do. That's all I'm gonna do. I gotta be careful I don't let the thorns. I gotta be careful I'm not on the wayside where it's is gone. You go back home after we hear a word and thinking, what was the word, brother? Lovely pastor spoke on grace. What was the word, brother? Something about mercy he spoke. Yeah, but what exactly you learned? Oh, it was a nice message. I mean, I'm not talking about your memory skills. I'm bad at that. I'm talking about that. With the word that you go home and say, oh, what that's got? You know, you know, friends, you know, whenever we share things, it's only 10 or 5 percent of what God wants to speak to you. He wants you to go home, take that scripture, and dwell, dwell in that. Digest that, ingest that, and digest that. Pulpit is not a magic. God gives us, we share that in fight, whatever time we have in 25 or 45 minutes, even if it's two hours I share here, it's still one person of what God wants to speak to you. Mm. He's giving you an appetite to go and ask the Holy Spirit, who's the same person who gave me the word, will give you the word in more explanation. And how disciples came and said, can you explain to me a parable? But beware of the thorns. Beware of the, of the rocky side. Beware of the wayside. All you can do is have a good heart. Hear the word. Keep it. Keep it when there's cares. Keep it when there's temptations to do things differently. Keep it. <clears throat> and God give you strength. He knows the capacity. He knew the soil. What minerals it has. God the sower was sowing his seed which is Jesus Christ, in the hearts of the people, in the soil of the people. Soil, I said, is the hearts of people. He was sowing his seed into the substance, the hearts of people. That is kingdom of God, sir, friends. Kingdom of God is started when Christ came. He said, kingdom of God has come now. And all these years now, more and more as we reach the end, the kingdom of God is going to be more revealed, more and more in us. It's not an observation, it's not here or there, it's going to be with us. But the question this morning I'm going to ask all of you is, is the kingdom of God is within you or is outside of you? Think about it. Is it within you or is it outside of you? Because you can be for another 20 years, 30 years the same way and not changed. I don't want to be that. That doesn't mean you won't have temptations, you won't have thorns, you won't have situations that will try to take it out, but that simply means that you are enduring the word, that you're keeping the word, that you're just consciously making an effort to keep away from thorns that chokes the word. I love this word, bearing fruit for fruits with patience. But there's something we don't speak nowadays in the church, isn't it? We want instant answers. We want instant revelation. We want instant healing. We want instant signs. God can do that. No, that doesn't limit God. He can't do. But He will do, but you won't grow. He will do, but you won't mature. He will do, but you won't develop to be the sons and daughters of God. Amen. See, the whole purpose is He wants you and me to be the sons and daughters of God. We are already in, in heavenly places. We are sitting in heavenly places, Paul said. We are already there. But I, I can't see anything, Lord. He says, good. I don't want you to see certain things. But I want you to walk. I want you to walk. And God has given that. He's given the word. He's given Jesus. Amen? Jesus. The only begotten of the Father. Jesus God. And the more you understand, the more you dig. I always say the word of God is not simple. I'm sorry if you all, I never felt like that. It's not simple. It's, it's like a archaeologist who digs and digs and digs. The more he digs, the more he see treasures coming out. I mean, I know man of God is 50, 60 years preaching, preaching every Sunday for 50 years. And they said, this morning, I opened the Bible, and I was waiting on the Lord for the congregation, for the message. I seen something I never seen. What? 
It thrilled me. It blessed my heart. I, I was so filled. This is what I haven't seen. 50 years of preaching. Every Sunday. Great word. You have gone to the Bible like maybe 20 times. But you see, friends, good to go to the Bible. But we want the author of the Bible to become real to us. And this Bible become another book that you well know. We want the author who wrote the Bible to become a to us intimate. So I will encourage you this morning. Make sure you you go to the word because God will take you. God is not a partiality for people. Whatever calling is put in your life, it's only in the seed that will, is with you can bear that fruit. Simple. You can have all other things. You can listen to messages every day, every week, and today we have a multitude of, of messages to YouTube. Friends, all good, but if it's not a life lived, you just you'll have swelled up with all messages, and you might even get too confused. But when you live a simple word and say, Lord, I want this word to become part of me. I want this word to sort of, in a way, you know, in a way trouble me that it changes me inch by inch. I mean, Lord, only you can do it. When you have that hunger and thirst, friends, I believe, that's what it's called bearing fruits with patience. And God will do it. Amen. God will do it. Mm. He doesn't want you. And many people tell me, even I thought that. I wish it's perfect environment. I can grow perfect environment. I wish I don't have this kind of thing. I wish I don't have that kind of thing. No, you're not. He's looking for a character. What you in the dark? What you in the room? What you in the secret place? Not that secret place, your secret place. What are you doing? What are you watching? Is it edifying your spirit? You know, did Christ sometimes tell you in the spirit? Turn it off. Have you heard this voice sometime? I did hear it. I'm watching something. I hear the voice saying, Turn it off. Ah, it's nice, it's educated. Turn it off. I don't. I don't. I disobey. And then I get sucked into it. And then the effects are so much after the man. Go back to the Lord. So I told you, I always keep talking to my children. Do you ever have that? Not just watching TV, watching movies, watching, reading an article. Do you ever have that word talking to you? Why? It will keep talking to you. If you keep listening, you'll hear. You've got to listen, Lord, if you want me to do. Even if you're going some way, some the Lord will tell you, you know, can you just take a break? And sometimes I did certain things. Now, again, don't take this out of, out of context. You've got to be careful. Talking to the congregation here. I don't want to tell you something, the Lord told me to go to heaven. It's like completely wrong. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not advocating for that. I'm saying there's a voice that speaks to you, the seed in you starts speaking to you. And you just have to keep your, sometimes you're so busy asking God that we don't listen to you. I do, I do. I, I look at myself and say, I do that. He says, stop, can you just listen to me what I'm saying? Ah, uh, no, Lord, I want to do that. Yes, but can you listen to me what I'm saying? Friends, the seed in you is so valuable. Seed so valuable. And I love even the last bit. Some produce 30, some produce 60, some produce 100. I wondered why that also depends. Can everyone produce 100? I'll leave that to you. I'll leave that to you. Some 30, Susan, some 60, some 100. I believe also as part of me. This is my thought. But how come not everyone is under? Is it God's partial? I give Susan 30. And she's, not, she's not that close to me. That sister, I'll give. That son, that my son, I'll give 50. I give his answer. No. <laughs> he wants to give everyone that perfect fruit. As I says here, a fruit of perfection. Now, not to, again, I'm not talking about gifts and callings here. I'm not, I'm not talking about God is you. I'm not talking about gifts and offices. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not promise and then we try to be like the others and call the others. I'm not talking about those things. What is the seed that placed in you? What Christ has placed in you? Sometimes it takes you years to discover that, isn't it? 
And after you discover it, it takes another few years for you to wait on it. And then Yandai takes and uses you, and then he leaves you back again. And then you develop, say, Lord, you just used me for two minutes, and now I'm just, he says, yes, I want you to go. Like one man of God says, it's like a pen in the altar, in the pocket of the, in the pocket of the altar. I take the pen whenever I want it, but as long as I know the pen is available. I might use only for my sign, and I keep it back in my pocket, the old two days. The pen says, that's not what I want to be used. I want to write a poem for you. No, it's my pocket. I take it when I want, and I use it when I want. But as long as I know the pen is almost every time available for me, it gives me a sense of ownership and I can use it. Friends, God, it's going to do that in our lives. We need to completely heal to the sea. And we also have this moment. Inspiration a few minutes. Remember the four environments. Don't let the thorns choke you. The cares. Don't let, don't be in a place where you can't grow and be rooted. Don't let the sun scorch you out. Don't be the wayside that the world can be trampled and finally the devil will take it out. I mean, we know people who have heard the word, heard the word, but it's so sad that they don't know the word anything now and they're wondering what happened. It's a sad thing. God wants us to, to have to be in the good soil, the soil where it's free from all the springs. Christ wants us because he's all about the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. It's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has its three characteristics. Remember that. The peace, the joy, the righteousness, and none of it's for, from us, not ours. Father, I thank you for the word this morning. Thank you for the miracle that you gave me you to stand here and share this word, Lord. Lord, as we take this word, including me, Father, Lord, let it produce the fruit. Let us, let us live this word you spoken, Lord. Help us to go home and, and just meditate on this word, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this word you've given your, your people this morning. Jesus. Lord, I pray that this word will not be snatched from them, Father. I pray that they will, they will hold on to this word with patience. Each one of us this morning who are here, Lord, I pray, Father, and, who, and the those who's going to watch the YouTube, Father, I just pray that the word will not be taken from them. Lord, I pray the thorns will not choke them. Lord, I pray for a hundredfold fruits, hundredfold growth in their life, Master. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Bless the congregation this morning. Help them to walk with you, Father. Help them to keep Jesus, the word, in them, Father, knowing the kingdom of God is with them. Thank you, Jesus. Ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. Anyone needs prayer? Come later for prayer. I'll be here. Close your eyes for benediction. We finish this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. All God's people say amen. amen. We have a quick uh, youth and parent meeting after the service, so please stay back. Thank you. God bless you.